we're with Stephen Goldstein and Troy Stevenson in Highland Park to talk about some exciting new um, developments in the LGBT community. So, Stephen, why don't you start off and uh, tell us uh, what's new? Well, I want to be the first to share this with Blue Jersey readers and viewers and with the community, with our organization, with the public. Um, eight and a half years after founding Gorenstead Equality, I'm going to be moving on as the leader of the organization, as chair and CEO, and I'm going to be assuming a new role on January 23rd as Associate Chancellor for External Relations at Rutgers Newark. And that means that I will be overseeing the communications and the government relations at Rutgers Newark, and uh, it's a dream come true for me. Um, I am um, bursting with joy, I have to confess. Uh, I taught at the law school at Rutgers Newark last semester. I had the time of my life, got to know the campus. Uh, I've long wanted to do uh, a job in academia. As many of your viewers know, uh, I went back to school years ago to become a rabbi, and I'm still going to do that uh, someday. Uh, I hope in the next few years, but when uh, Rutgers Newark offered me this opportunity, I couldn't say no. And this is the only job uh, for which I would have uh, stepped down as chair and CEO of Garden State Equality. And my last day at Garden State Equality in terms of being the chair and CEO of the organization is going to be uh, Sunday, uh, January 20th, our inauguration celebration brunch. And um, at that time, the new chair and CEO will be one of the most talented people uh, I've ever worked with and one of the dearest friends I've ever had. And yep, hand-picked successor and groomed, um, my uh, incredible friend, Troy Stevenson. And I could not be more proud or happier. So um, this is a happy moment for me, and uh, it's a happy moment for Troy. And Troy, I'm so proud. So thank proud you. of you. Thank you, Stephen. Um, I, I can't thank you enough. Um, Stephen has been a mentor to me for the last three years. When I uh, started working with our Garden State Quality in 2009, um, he took me under his wing, and this is, this is a culmination of three years of collaboration. And uh, even after I left to go back to the Obama campaign in 2012, Steve and I have been in contact on a, a virtually daily basis about things that are going on here in New Jersey. Um, I couldn't be happier to be back and to be um, attempting to fill the shoes of somebody that, that I care so much about and, and have enjoyed working with and for. And make so no long. mistake, yeah, Troy, make no mistake, you can fill my shoes and more. You know, Every leader has uh, some great attributes, and in my case, maybe some not great attributes. Let's put it in perspective. Let's take a look backwards a little bit, if, if we may, and uh, tell me about your accomplishments in the last eight years. What are you most proud of? What, what's your legacy going to be in Garden State Equality? Um, well, I guess I could say this with some humor. Uh, I started out as a 250-pound 42-year-old, and I wound up as a 150-pound 50-year-old. Hey, that's not bad. <laughs> well, can I, let me preface your question. You know, um, Troy and the rest of the board had asked me, would I stay on in some capacity? Absolutely. Uh, by the way. I think it's very important um, that Stephen has always been somebody that, that I spoke to about everything, decision that we've made as a part of Garden State Equality, he always will be the best advisor. He's going to stay on um, the executive committee. and, and as a, On an ex-officio basis, because right. let me say this. I want to make this really clear. It wouldn't be fair to my new job. I am not going to be running Garden State Equality as Troy's marionette. Um, ethically, I have a new job, and my obsession and my passion will be Rutgers Newark, period. I'll be lobbying on behalf of Rutgers Newark, period. So, Not Garden State Quality, but I just want to preface that by saying, of course I'll be there on an ex officio basis involved in the organization. So looking back, you know, 
It's an interesting thing for a founder of any organization. A founder of any organization is going to hear, regardless of who it is, regardless of the founder, oh gosh, is this some cult of personality? Uh, is this all about the founder? And I, I've spoken to founders of other organizations. And I, I, listen, I get that criticism. And in response, I tell you about the greatest achievement we've had. And it isn't necessarily that on Garden State Equality's watch, we've passed the strongest and best transgender equality laws in the country, the strongest anti-school bullying law in the country, some of the country's strongest laws against discrimination, against hate crimes, and one of, I think, three states that has paid family leave for same-sex couples, 213 laws. We can go on and on and on about that. Listen, here's the, the thing I'm most proud of that I had something to do with an organization that inspired thousands of new people to enter activism and to new heights of activism. And it is they who passed all those laws, not me. And I think Troy would be the first person to say, which is why I don't think this transition is that big a deal. It's not a new era. The backbone of Garden State Equality, it's you. It's the members, it's the volunteers, um, it's the thousands of people who showed up again and again at the State House. That's not me, that's not just one leader or cult of personality, that's all you. And to the extent that I founded an organization that had something to do with that, that's pretty awesome. Uh, years ago in activism, before Garden State Equality existed, there were and remain from that era some really terrific people. They absolutely deserve their due for laying the groundwork long before I ever came on the scene. But I would hear one common complaint and, uh, from them back then. Oh God, you know, it's the same people, the same small group of us over and over again. It's not that way. It hasn't been that way for eight and a half years. We can't we can't keep up with all the people who want to be involved. I mean, we can, but I say that figuratively. Um, um, so, it's the people who, who have gotten involved in social change for the first time, especially our youth. Right. The youth. It's, it's the most gratifying thing that we're helping to train the next generation. What do you think? Absolutely. Um, we've got a very active youth caucus, and it's one of, of your biggest legacies. It's the, um, the group of, of young people that have been involved over the last uh, two years while we passed the um, the Anti-Bullying Bill of Rights and that they've, they've stayed involved and they've continued to, to grow uh, that aspect of our organization, uh, or the volunteerism, the um, outreach we've done to schools and will continue to do through uh, our new and bullying initiative that we're going to be um, unveiling very soon. So. I, I want to tell you what I really admire about Troy and it's his mind. And Troy will bring to Garden State Equality, I mean, he's always been involved, he remains on our board, he's been managing director, but as, as our new leader effective on, uh, on uh, the 20th, the 21st, the first. Um, he'll bring the same sort of analytical ability, a cool, rational, incredibly in-depth savvy in analytics that was the key to the Obama campaign on which he worked in 2012. So Troy will know, because he's a field operative, every block and every house of every swing district in this state. Trust me, right. I know that. Knocked on most of those doors already. <laughs> That's well, why I'm so excited. Well, let's talk a little bit about some of the ongoing um, initiatives, primarily the, the override. Can you share with us any information on the timing, the, the vote count? Um, where do we stand on that? Okay. I wish I had a Torah because I would put my hand on the Torah and like a Hebrew national hot dog, I'd answer to a higher authority. So if I had my hand on a Torah or a Tanakh, as it were, I would put my hand on the Tanakh and I would say the statement. We have more votes today for an override than we had when we won marriage equality in both houses of the legislature uh, in February 2012. That we absolutely do. We're not there yet, but we have made significant, significant progress. Um, 
If we stay focused like a laser beam, we are going to win and override in 2013. Now, I hear people say, eh, will Republicans ever break away from Governor Christie? Do you really think that would happen? Let me say this. Did anybody back in 2009 or 2010, when we got shellacked in our marriage equality vote, and that's all another story, I'm dying to talk about that. When we got shellacked, did anybody expect that we would go from a vote in the Senate of 14 to 20 to 24, 16? We never stopped believing. We never lost our laser beam focus. Stay focused, folks. We're going to win that in 2013. We have made lots of progress. No, I'm not going to advertise who exactly we have changed. I promise you on that Tanakh, we've changed votes. I'm not going to broadcast our strategy and intelligence and let the right wing see it. I'm just not. Okay, back, back earlier in the year when, uh, when the uh, bill was, was brought up in front of the Senate and the Assembly, Republicans were saying, let's just have a referendum. Recently, uh, at least one assemblyman has uh, also a Democratic assemblyman has joined that, that chorus. Where do you stand on a referendum? Troy, do you want to take that? Because, <laughs> listen, I think you should let our new leader okay. talk to that. Um, even before I was contacted by Garden State Equality about coming back, um, one of my biggest concerns that I've been talking to Stephen and, and others in the community about over the last few weeks is this idea of a referendum in 2013. There are dozens of reasons not to put the rights of the LGBT community of New Jersey on the ballot ever. And there's even more reasons not to do it this year. Um, my concern is the obvious that, that voting on the rights of the minority is, is not something that the majority should be doing, which is something that, that we continue to repeat and we, we truly believe. But there are also tangibles that, that make it a bad idea right now. My concern, and with all due respect to, um, to the legislators that are proposing this, this uh, move, I don't believe it's been thought through. It doesn't appear to be thought through. And one of the, the things that has been said to me personally is that it, it'll be debated on in the legislature. That's when these, this thought process will go through. Well, my concern is, is even putting this forward. Um, without that thought process, without knowing what kind of campaign will be run, without doing the, the proper due diligence that, that it takes to run a successful ballot initiative, um, is, is counterproductive and dangerous. Um, it, we've got a court case that, that is absolutely active. Um, and while judges obviously rule on the law, they're influenced by what happens on the outside. And the vote of the people if we were to lose because we went into an ill-fated and ill-advised ballot initiative without the proper steps to ensure victory, um, could have a, a very negative effect on our court case. We've got override. We, we're not there yet, but we've got the potential to get there, and we think we will get there in the next year. But not if we're telling, we're giving an out to legislators that have previously and are still against us. Um, yeah, and Troy, it's, a, it's interesting you say that. I know I'm not going to mention this legislator's name, but again, Scout's Honor, um, to the extent that I would give the Scouts any honor given their anti-gay <laughs> policy, there was a legislator who recently uh, told us that um, he or she is ready to change his or her vote on marriage equality. And... Um, more than ready, was ready to announce that as such. And somebody, by the way, who has not been even rumored to be a moderate, willing to change his or her vote. And then once this referendum idea got floated, this legislator pulled back. Is now really the time in 2013, as we're going for an override, to give legislators that cover? Listen. I believe that an override is a very legitimate topic for consideration after 2013 if we don't override. 2013 is a disastrous year for us in terms of giving legislators cover for marriage equality to vote against it, in terms of Governor Christie's being on top of the ballot, his ability to raise money, Absolutely. all the reasons Troy stated.
Troy, we've heard a lot about the continuity that's, that's going to occur during this transition. Um, certainly, there are a number of initiatives that are ongoing. Do you see any new initiatives within Garden State Equality in 2013 or beyond? Um, we're going to absolutely have uh, a continuity of, of what's been going on. I see a lot of programming that's going to be going forward that um, I plan to discuss with um, our board and executive committee. Um, there's going to be a lot of new things happening. A lot more of He's got a lot of good stuff planned. Yeah, I think you want to surprise folks a I little do. bit. Um, I think that we'll... I'd rather talk to the board and the executive committee about that in person before I say anything more. Final question. Um, people who are listening to this, if they want to help Garden State Equality, how can they do that? Um, we accept donations. Um, and your they website? can write a check to... Uh, the website is great. Um, all volunteers, we absolutely, all joking aside, um, we need volunteers more than ever. Um, the override is absolutely urgent. Uh, that is our best path to victory right now. And we, over the coming months, are going to need as many boots on the ground as possible to make sure that legislators throughout the state know that not only is this the right thing to do, it's a the thing they have to do if they want to keep their jobs. Gordon State Equality owes so much to New Jersey. I personally owe so much to New Jersey. Um, our organization and our movement for equality would be absolutely nothing without New Jersey. I want to be really specific. It started um, under its former editor, uh, Juan Melly, the founder of New Jersey, and has continued amazingly through Rosie our beloved current founder of Blue Jersey. Um, but it started back during the Laurel Hester saga. I'm sure your viewers and your bloggers remember that. And that was the saga when Garden State Equality took to the streets with so many of you um, to fight for the right of Lieutenant Hester to give death benefits to her partner while Lieutenant Hester was dying. And Blue Jersey, uh, in a in an era, in an era is just 2005, when the internet was not a tool with as many websites as Blue Jersey. Today there are other websites. Blue Jersey remains extraordinarily unique, but back in 2005, Blue Jersey was a voice in the low wilderness that relentlessly, relentlessly was there as our voice for justice on the web. And I got strength every single day. I, I worked on that particular case for Laurel, as did so many of you, 10, 12 hours a day, in addition to doing other things in my life. I got strength every single day reading Blue Jersey. And I really said to myself, you can't give up. You can't give up. And I would read the blogs by folks at Blue Jersey. And I was just inspired, as were so many other people, to fight harder. And throughout the years, the Blue Jersey writers, the front page writers, have really been the conscience of progressive activism. And you know what? Also of LBGT, LGBT progress. God knows it hasn't just been Garden State Equality. We're here at the offices of New Jersey Citizen Action because it's halfway between us, Steve, based in Montclair, and you in South Jersey. And this has been an amazing organization. Blue Wave of New, Blue Wave of New Jersey has been an amazing organization. The ACLU of New Jersey, Freedom to Marry, HRC, um, ACLU nationally. I, I could go on and on. It's Blue Jersey and our unions, let me, let, me, let me not forget the unions, because Hedy Rosenstein, I love you so much, and our clergy. I can go on and on. I'll, I'll sound like Miss America. I'm like verklempt. I'm tearing up. I'm so verklempt. It's Blue Jersey that has this unique role in our state of telling it like it is, and they even, even, sometimes have given me a hard time. And uh, God knows that my... Dear friend Jay Lasseter, when he has written for Blue Jersey, when he disagrees with me or anyone else, ooh, blistering. Good, good, awesome. Um, it, it's Blue Jersey such an incomparable voice in our state that even when 
leaders like me or Troy or anyone else disagree with you, you make us think. And we hardly disagree with you ever because we're all progressives. And when we agree with you, you're our nourishment, you're our strength. So don't for a second think that you're writing just to yourselves. Um, you all made this possible. All of you at Blue Jersey and all of the members of Grand State Equality, it hasn't been me. And I know that our movement and our organization at Grand State Equality will soar way higher with me merely as a member than I have been as its leader and will soar higher than ever with Troy Stevenson as its leader. And I swear to you, that would make me the happiest person in the whole world. Well, on, on behalf of Blue Jersey and Blue Jersey's writers who don't always speak with a single voice, uh, I thank you for those kind words. And I wish you, Stephen Goldstein, and you, Troy Stevenson, the best of luck in your new endeavors. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you.